Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about principal component analysis and uh, negative matrix factorization and how they are applied to dimensionality reduction problems and how similar they are. Let's get started. Okay, let's compare non negative matrix factorization or NNMF with PCA. Both PCA and NNMF are widely used for dimensionality reduction purposes in which a few of the basis functions extracted from the data set using either methods are used to represent the whole data set at a smaller number of dimensions. They do that using the basis functions or eigenvectors that they extract from a high dimensional data using their own particular algorithm. The data is then projected onto those eigenvectors resulting in a dimensionality reduction as shown in this picture. The difference between the two sets of basis functions is in the case of the PCA there are both negative and positive values in the eigenvectors but in the case of the NNMF there is only non-negative values in the eigenvectors. We're going to compare them both here and see which one has a lower error in the compression and the subsequent reconstruction of the data. We're going to learn how to do that in MATLAB as well. The data that we're going to use has a dimension of uh, 31 by uh, 1269 as it's been shown right up here. And we, are and we are planning to compress the data along the first dimension, the 31. So we compress it, R prime, and uh, as you can see, M is smaller or equal to 31. So we're going to compress it along the first dimension. The data is actually a set of spectral reflectance data belonging to the famous Munsell color system as shown below. This is shown here. The Monsanto color system has been made into a book as shown here whose spectral reflectance were consequently measured. So if spectral reflectance of each square here is measured and there is 1269 samples so it resulted in 31 by 1269 data set. First we compress it and then we uh, recover, we reconstruct the data again. As shown, this is the process of compression and the subsequent reconstruction. The spectral reflectance of each sample has been measured from 400 to 700 nanometer at 10 nanometer interval. Hence 31 dimension. Here's the spectral reflectance of the data that we're gonna use. Let's first have a look at the basis functions extracted from this data set using NNMF and PCA. The, the one on the left shows NNMF and the one on the right shows the basis function extracted using PCA. And these are the first three basis functions extracted from our data set using PCA and NNMF. It is worth noting that PCA basis functions have both positive and negative values, but in the case of NNMF there are only non-negative values. Some people sometimes call the NNMF basis function realistic basis function as well as they don't have any negative value. Should be noted that uh, both sets of basis functions comprise basis functions that are orthogonal to each other and it is interesting to see how different these two sets of basis functions are compared to each other. You can see that this, the first three, the first one in the PCA is the average and then the other one, but in this case they are more, much more similar to each other, but they are all orthogonal to one another. We now want to see what happens when we use the basis functions extracted using NNMF and PCA to compress and reconstruct the data we have. In other words, we want to see which one leads to a lower error of reconstruction. In order to do that, first it should be noted that the error naturally should go down by adding more basis functions to compress the data. Also, the dimension of our data is 31 by 1269, which are the spectral reflectance data of 1269 samples of Munsell data set, as mentioned before. We're going to compress this data along the spectral reflectance dimension, which is 31. So we start 
with only one basis function and go up to 31 basis functions to see how the error changes when the number of basis functions taking part in the compression process increases. And here's the error of reconstruction versus the number of eigenvectors or basis functions using NNMF and on the right is the same thing but using PCA. You can see that in both cases the error goes down as the number of basis functions increases in the compression and the reconstruction process. But the rate at which the error goes down is not the same. In the case of NMF the error goes down uh, a lot faster at the start but then the rate slows down. But in the case of PCA the error goes down at a much lower rate at first and then it gets faster at the end. Also the error starts at a much smaller value for NNMF. This is 0.41 but this is 1.5 more than 1.5. So the error, the, the, error starts, uh, the error starts at a much smaller value for NNMF when only one basis function has been used as I just said. It should be noted that the shape of the curves might not be the same when data set changes but for this da data set these are the results but overall all the data set the error should go down at the end the result here makes total sense as when you add more basis function to compress your data you are using more information and the information lost in the compression is minimized making the subsequent reconstruction more accurate which is what we are seeing in both cases. Let's also have a quick look at the coding part of this video. As you can see this is how we did NNMF non-negative matrix factorization. This is our data set. This is where it's located and uh, first the covariance matrix is formed and then the non-negative matrix factorization of the covariance matrix is uh, extracted and the V are the, are the basis functions which are normalized which res with respect to the maximum value it's in each vector and then we go down we keep adding to the uh, to the number of eigenvectors or basis functions and we we compress them this is the C C is the compressed version of the uh, of our data which is R man cell and then we uh, reconstruct them again and the error of reconstruction is uh, RMSE root, root mean square error and the average of the error is calculated across the uh, 1269 data and because we go from 1 to 31 which is the number of eigenvectors in each uh, process of compression and the, cons and the subsequent reconstruction uh, we have 31 average values which are going to be plotted here. I'm also showing the first three uh, basis functions of an NMF. And for PCA it's the same. First covariance matrix is calculated and the eigenvectors are, are extracted and uh, after that I'm adding to the number of eigenvectors then I compress and using this equation which is the exact same as this one so I compress the 31 values to just th three values for each 1269 samples in, the, in my data set, which is R man cell. And then I reconstruct them again and I calculate the error of reconstruction. And I show the average and at the end I also show the first, the three most important eigenvectors which are correspondent to the highest value of eigenvalues which is W. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked the video, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share it with your friends. Thank you and have a nice day.